All right. Seems good. And seems like we are live. I can see the comments. And let me just check. Are we streaming it good? Or it's going to take... It seems like we are almost there. Yep, we are live. We are live. All right. Hey there, everyone. Hitesh here. And welcome to the YouTube channel. Uh, this time we are doing a live in the afternoon. Uh, but that's the perk of uh, being uh, in your studio at your home. And it, it's a pretty fun stuff. And uh, today what we're going to do is uh, we'll be discussing that how it looks like and what it takes to reach to the product hunt. Something that you think as an idea and then you move it in building it. Then you move it into testing it and finally doing a launch. And it's it's really a tough journey. And thank goodness we have some of the amazing folks right from Barcelona, one of my favorite places, uh, to visit and enjoy. And they'll be helping us in understanding what their product does, how and what it takes to build a product like this, uh, directly coming from the CEO and CTO of a freshly brewed company. And I'm pretty sure uh, this is going to be all there. So uh, first of all, the whole idea behind this stream is to give you a behind the scene of what it takes to build a product, develop a product, which is developer focused. That's very important for me. And then moving it onto the product hunt so that a lot of people can know about it. So first of all, hey, Marco says, welcome and welcome to this beautiful subcontinent, India. Where are you from and how are you doing? Hi, Hitesh. Thanks a lot for the intro. Uh, we are here in, in Barcelona, Spain. Yeah, here right. is, uh, you mentioned it was uh, afternoon in India. This is quite early in the morning yeah. I'm in Barcelona. Yeah, and first and big question. Uh, in case those who don't know, you can just do a quick Google search. There is a nice fl uh, place there, uh, La Sangrada Familia, if I'm sp uh, pronouncing it correct. Uh, a quick question. When are you planning to finish the construction of that? <laughs> I mean, it's taking a while, actually. Oh, a while, man. Come on, man. My friend visited like before COVID. It was still under construction. And I went recently, just a few months ago. Uh, I was there in the Spain. It was still constructing. Come on, man. It's taking yeah, more yeah, than yeah. Bilbo. I like, you build Bilbo I... faster than that. Yeah, we've been for us faster. I think the family has been under construction ever since uh, we've been alive. So, yeah, just like years. And uh, if we are talking about uh, Barcelona, uh, man, how's the football game going on? We, we cannot skip that. Not my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough, a tough one. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> it was like 3 1 for, for one? Yeah, for one. Uh, I mean, we are not really much into football, we are programming all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you have different uh, likes and stuff going on with that. So coming on, on to the part, uh, hey, Cess, I'll go with the Cess first. Uh, Cess is holding the CTO position, so I'll start with there. Uh, hey man, how did you start at programming? What was your first programming language? Uh, well, the first like serious programming language that I started working on was Java. But actually, I got into programming because my dad is uh, a programmer also. And when we were, I was, uh, I don't know, like maybe 12 years old or something like that, he introduced me to Pascal, actually, wow. uh, which is like an older. Some of you would know it probably. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Pascal? Come yeah. on, man. Who, who wants to write code in that? <laughs> he showed me like a little uh, terminal game, and I tried to make it like a Minesweeper terminal. Okay, that. Awesome. And what about you, Marco? How did you got started? So I actually learned programming at the university. I didn't know how to program before. And um, here at the university, we learn C++. So you took the yeah. formal route uh, and Seth yeah. got introduced to programming via the dad. Uh, so uh, how did you got started with building this product, Pulpo? Like, what was the reason? Like, what's the need of building Pulpo? I can reply that. Uh, so actually, while while also studying uh, here in the university, I used to work part time as a developer, and we always had these problems on uh, code review conversations. And you know, uh, 
the pull request got stale all the time and the conversation happened on GitHub, but no one was really aware on which pull request they were involved. And we used to talk in Slack, in DMs or channels where there was people that was not involved in the process. And I decided to create a GitHub Slack integration to create a temporal Slack channel for every pull request. And that channel will be connected to the pull request with all the notifications and the conversation happens there. And it's always synchronized with GitHub. Oh, so um, you got frustrated with the manual process. So you thought, hey, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to automate this. Yeah. And uh, that actually worked very well uh, in, the, in the company I worked for. And I decided to build a product around it. Uh, well, and then convince Sesk somehow the best programmer I know to, to also join the product, the project. And now it has evolved a lot since, since then. So both of you are now uh, the sole coder of the company as of now. Yeah. 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 And all the things happens right behind at the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, things happen here, yeah. Oh, man, well, that's actually, so good to see that somebody just fresh out of the graduate college and has thought to build a product and is now building. I guess this is your first company that you're building? Yeah, first company. Actually, uh, we are in the buildings of the university. Uh, the university gives us a free, free space that we can uh, be here and work here. And we are in this ecosystem of you know, professors and the students and all around tech and programming. And it's really cool. Oh, so you are building right from the base of the university for the world. Yeah. So how did you came up with the name of Pulpo? Like what's that pull? I somehow understand huh. comes from the pull request, but what's, what's this Pulpo? How did you edit that flavor? You know, actually, uh, Pulpo in Spanish uh, means octopus. And oh. the, yeah, that's a, that nobody, no, not many people know that. Uh, and I'm from a small town in Spain uh, where octopus is a really traditional dish. So pulp also has that part. I'm also for, from pull, pull request, of course. Oh, that's nice. Somehow my uh, automatic, this, I hate this stuff when this, uh, this new stuff from the Apple, I put up a thumbs and somehow it detects automatically a thumbs up. And somehow when I put the hands down, it, it makes it thumbs down. Like, why, why is it doing so? I, I just absolutely hate that. Uh, anyways, so uh, that I really like when the companies add their own flavor. Like uh, in one of my other channel, I'm adding a flavor of chai because chai is Indian name for tea. Uh, so yeah, I, I really love when people integrate their own uh, nativeness to the product and sending it out in the world. I never knew that Pulpo means octopus. So you, uh, I guess now you are <laughs> completely in sync with the octopus of the Git, GitHub especially. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, one yeah, quick yeah. question. Uh, I'll go one by one, uh, starting with Ses. Ses, who you think right now you are looking up as like, hey, he's a cool developer. Uh, there are a lot of developers out there. There's a lot of them from Warcell. Uh, from databases like Postgres. There are new databases coming up like Astro and whatnot. Uh, and of course, everybody's favorite, the founder of the gate as well. Who do you think is right now a programmer you're looking forward? Hey, he's the cool guy. Like, uh, I, I follow some some programmers in, in uh, influencers now on YouTube. I really like the recaps that Fireship does on, on programmer news. I think oh. they are so funny. Uh, and also there's a couple Spanish uh, channels. Uh, one of them is uh, friends with us. Their name is Coderi TV, which are big, big YouTube in Spain. Or MidoDev is also another. another ah, nice. Yeah, nice. What about friends. you, Marco? Also, of course, also Hitesh. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, are we also... Uh, I also follow, you know, I, I have... Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, there's go ahead. A... Um, no, I just wanna wanted to say that I also follow other people like 
I don't know, for example, uh, the CEO of Vercel, Guillermo, I have like some, some people that are like really important for me. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, are we live now on uh, Product Hunt? Yeah, yeah, quite minutes, like 10 minutes ago, uh, the Product Hunt voting started. Uh, so oh. it's, I don't know how many people are here, but you want to support us that would be great of course of course we would love to support indie developers we absolutely love it when people are building right from the university grad uh, and right from the university hub i would love to support it so uh, definitely go ahead visit on pulpo.to slash p hunt i've already mentioned that and uh, it's also pinned on the stream as well so go ahead and uh, show some support uh, send them some love from india as well so uh, first big question Thank goodness you didn't launch on Monday uh, because Monday was a war on the product. And those who don't know, uh, Monday was a war between Cal.com and Superbase and they were fighting and they brought in a lot of traffic on the product. And uh, so you also finally are on product and what it takes to reach to product hunt, like what's the nuances they do? Uh, what's the thing one can be aware of while listing on the product and can you talk a little on that? Yeah, so actually there's a whole world behind Product Hunt and there are a lot of articles writing on what are the best techniques, what is the best day to launch in Product Hunt and uh, for example, you can, you know, recommend products also on the launch, you can have a hunter for, the, for your launch uh, we have the luck to count with with flow with is a which is a really great hunter on product hunt um, but actually there's a big component i think of of luck and and just that the universe uh, is in the right moment and i'm also having a, a good product uh, and just having a good demo, some good images. Um, I think that that's it. And uh, you also, we were discussing this, you also went for a studio-ish environment to shoot this uh, product demos and all of that. So how mm -hmm. much do you think that plays a role of uh, having a nice video, having a nice images? Hmm. Actually, if you check out on other launches, on other products, there are some good um, and very successful launches with just a very simple demo, a very simple video, just a screen recording. And actually, I don't know how big of a component is that. On the last, we also, this is the second time we launched. On the first launch, we uh, did a great video from a friend of mine. Uh, Alberto, uh, and this one is just a demo of me talking about uh, this new product we, we launched. Uh, let's see <laughs> which one works the better. Uh, uh, this, this one is definitely going to. Okay, a couple of <laughs> things. Uh, since let's now move to talk about what it takes to build a developer first product like this, uh, which is focused on the pull request, having a lot of metrics and all of that. Uh, what's the tech stack that you got started with and how how did you like, hey, this is going to be my repo and how did you got started? I just want to know the initial bit of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, for the tech stack, uh, we're using Go for the backend. Uh, basically, the decision behind it, uh, I mean, I, I came into the project a bit later, so it was made, but I, I can imagine that our system is very event-based, no? We have events from GitHub and events from Slack, and we have to synchronize these events. So we need uh, a language that, that is very fast, so it doesn't, it doesn't become a, a bottleneck. Uh, if, you, if we look at the statistics of our server, the, the server part, the Go, is, is super fast. It's like taking, I don't know, 2% CPU or something like that, like really low. What you uh, went with the database of the choice for this product? For database, we went for Postgres. Just oh, because it's I, the, I the love Postgres. Cool. Like, I yeah. have worked a lot with the MySQL as well, but the amount of flexibility and the features now Postgres is, I think somebody needs to read an entire book on the latest version of Postgres 
and it's it's really one of my favorite databases these days and i'm i'm working a lot to put more content on the postgres i'm reading a book as well <laughs> on that uh, so yeah great choice on the postgres as well uh, can we see a little bit on can i share your screen on here if yeah. i have your permission yeah uh, all right so i'll put this up okay so this is uh, your website i hope everybody can see that <clears throat> all right so first of all who built this home page uh, there's a lot of designer elements going on so did you hire a designer or build it on your own uh no we built it on, on our own yeah oh man this beautiful on your own you should build a yeah. design company <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh, what's know, the tech stack of this website like where is it and what's so this is built with next next three and mm -hmm. uh, we actually we was started at the beginning, also like a year ago, and we just started using Next3 when it just launched. Uh, like, I think we started with the beta of yeah. Next3, and there was like some problems there. Uh, and then we are using Telwin uh, for the CSS, and yeah, and it's deployed on, on Cloudflare workers. Oh man, that's awesome. Uh, nobody's about the traffic and bill. <laughs> uh, Cloudflare yeah. works really yeah. nice. All right. Uh, works great. Since we are here, can we see a small demo of what you have built so that other people can also get inspired by that? Like what, what sure. it takes and yeah. So the idea behind Pulpo is that uh, that code reviews need to happen faster. Need to happen fast. Uh, and also code review conversations, of course. And many times the problem uh, with GitHub is that when you create a pull request, uh, now we can create a pull request, delete some yeah, some, some code. Um, yeah, and yeah, create a pull request. So many times is that happens that you know pull requests take a lot of time and code reviews take a lot of time because the GitHub notification system is not great. And many times people start talking in Slack DMs or in channels where there are people that is not involved in the process. So uh, we, we also face this kind of uh, a lot of this issue that sometimes there are some requests are great and we want to talk to them more and want to get them streamlined, but it's all over the place. So we also face this. Yeah. So what Pulpo does to solve this is every time you create a pull request, it creates a Slack channel uh, dedicated for that pull request. And in this channel, all the people involved in the process, on only the people involved in the process are in this channel. As you can see, I well, says was the owner of the pull request, and I'm assigned as a reviewer. Um, I'm also joining the channel. And here we have notifications. Well, all notifications are customizable. Uh, you can customize everything, uh, but you can have notifications on the results of the workflows, on if it has merge conflicts. And the cool thing and the great thing is that if you create a code comment yeah. in GitHub, so the first review must happen on GitHub, right? But then when you do a code comment on GitHub, this comment, uh, as you can see, <laughs> will go back to the Slack. Oh, nice. And you can see the comment on Slack. And now if I reply here on Slack, uh, well, you can reply actually, and the comment goes back to GitHub. So every single feature of GitHub pull requests are synced with this channel. You can approve the pull request directly from the channel with a slash command on Slack. You can uh, assign a reviewer, adding a new person to the channel. Every single feature is in sync. And actually you can use Pulpo in single player mode, for example. Uh, you can, because no one is gonna notice if you are interacting with the pull request from the Slack channel or from GitHub. Uh, that's so nice that I can do all of this with the Slack itself. I actually loved the part of a Slack integration because uh, sometimes I am out, uh, not in front of my screens and all of that. 
and the github mobile app sucks i <laughs> sorry github <laughs> but I, I just don't like it that much i barely can see what's happening in that what my team is doing and once we integrated a uh, pulpo uh, so we can have the slack conversation directly back to back with my team and it goes up there uh, if they are on the screen they can see it on the github if they prefer it that way but what i really like is having the slack up there it's much better of an interface. It's already well proven and you can have a Slack channel and all of that. So I really like this. And mm -hmm. uh, okay, what happens when the pull request is merged? What happens in that case? Does, well, yeah. do we delete this Slack channel or it is still there? What happens there? Yeah, when you merge the pull request or even if you decline it, no, in the end, the Slack channel gets archived. So here you can see all my pull request channels. Uh, but these are the pull requests that are open. I want to have my context and my my working environment clear of any pull requests that have been in the past. So they are archived, but you can always look for them. You can, you can go here, browse channels, yeah, maybe, maybe you can. Or, or code over here. For instance, if I want to see the files, the, the times I change the emoji, as yes, you know, I can use uh, Slack's built-in like search bar. So here I, I would have every time that that file appeared on on a message that we sent from from GitHub, for instance. You know, oh, there's, a nice, uh, there's a nice there's a nice question by uh, Sandeep as well. Sandeep is saying, uh, so it's going to create a close integration with Slack. But one question: if we will create one channel for each PR, won't it fill up Slack a lot? I guess no, because you are not accepting pull requests from any random dude when you're working with the project. There are limited people in the company who are working on it, five people, 10 people, maybe 100, but you have a set number of people uh, who are working on it. And if they're filling up mm -hmm. the Slack a lot, I mean, that's a very fast pace of the development. Everybody loves that. Right. And also the thing is that with the pull request channel, you only get invited if you're actually involved. No? So you would be reviewing maybe three, four pull requests uh, at once. Um, that's that's by design not to reduce noise for people that are not involved in, in the pull request. Yeah. They don't need to get all the notifications, the reminders. And yeah. Everything. For example, if you are as you are assigned as a reviewer in three pull requests, you will only have three Slack channels for pull requests. OK, uh, one more yes. uh, thing, which I'm a big fan of, uh, your graphs and chart, man. Can can we have it? <laughs> can we have a look yeah. on this? Yeah, actually, uh, the the insights and the metrics is a really important part of Pulpo. Uh, we started doing the first of all. The how did you solution. how did you build this beautiful chart? Like, what library did you use? Like, how did you came up with this? I think the the library is called eCharts. Yeah. yeah. And um, actually, this library is great. Uh, it has, you can customize everything, absolutely everything. For example, this is the cycle time uh, of our organization, which is the time that it takes from starting a new task until this task is on production, divided in the different phases, like the work in progress, the pickup time, the code review time, and the merge time. Uh, here we have other, look at this. Other look at this. How how well you pulled up this library. Like, I have seen a lot of graphs and chart, but the way how you have presented in the colors and it makes sense, pull request and all of that. Oh man, I'm going to I'm gonna use this library for a couple of my other works yeah. as well. Also, you can see some charts in, in the squads also. So we can even have an overview of how each group of your organization is doing also on one page. Yep. But actually, the story behind how the metrics started is, is a bit interesting. Uh, we had some some clients using the, the PR, uh, the integrations with uh, Slack. And our claim is that you would accelerate review time, no? Because you can communicate faster. It's a communication tool and everything. Uh, so they asked for us to, well, we would like to see how much faster you're going. So that's why we be, we began doing metrics to kind of show yeah. this this progress for the for the team. We could see how how much they were improving the cycle time uh, in the in the back office, but they they couldn't see it. So we built this dashboard and start improving also this product. Also, the analytics and the code review product are integrated because 
You can also set objectives. Uh, for example, code review time must be less than four days. And in this, you can set all, also uh, reminders. And these reminders are going to appear in the Slack channels uh, or, or even in your team channel. So who built this front end of this website and how much time it took? Uh, I, I mean, I think we built yeah. it. Uh, both of us. Both yeah. of us, yeah. Oh, how much time did it took to build and see this uh, whole graphs and chart? And did you mess up in between? Like, oh, man, I'm, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I think we started uh, designing and programming the, the insights part uh, back in maybe April. Uh, so last year, yeah, like one year. Right? It's a year now. Oh man, that, that's a lot of work. And I have seen a lot of branch and owners. You have a squad as well. We use that feature, the squad feature. Can you show us that? Because that's one of my favorite feature of having the entire team and squads. Yeah. We so actually, are now using this quite a lot. Basically, squads are just group of people that group of developers that work together inside a company now. And you can uh, add these squads or even import them from GitHub. Uh, and then Pulp is going to track the metrics for all these different squads. Also, in Slack, you can have a squad channel. Here is, for example, uh, the backend uh, squad. And Pulp sends here info like uh, dynamic pull request status messages so that we all are aware on what the different status of the different pull requests are. Oh, man. How many people from your college are actually using this? So uh, from the college, uh, you know, some of them work in companies. And actually, one of, some of the first users of Pulpo are friends of, of, of of past uh, that works in other companies. Uh, I don't know, maybe I would say from the college, like 20 developers or something like that. Oh man, mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure you might be feeling absolutely great that, hey, we are right in the college and we are building something. So people might be thinking, hey, our seniors are really cool. They are building some cool product, which is out in the production and we are able to use it. How does it feel like to be a cool senior's ability to guide <laughs> the juniors? I'm pretty sure a lot of might come to you that, hey, our seniors are cool. Can we have some guidance or something like that? Does it happen? Well, actually, uh, we had, I had one occasion. You went to the mobile world conference a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, and I was going there to meet Marco, who was already there setting up the. We had a little stand to to give out uh, information, and I got recognized by someone like I've never ever been recognized before. <laughs> but it was it was curious. I mean, I I'm sure you get it all the time. <laughs> it was funny. It's it's such a great feeling. I always encourage people that hey, when you're in college. It's not just about the college studies. You anyway will do it. You in any way will graduate. You'll get that degree, certificate, whatever you want. But building something right in the college and putting in the production is something that everybody should do. And if your seniors are doing it, make sure you are valuing it. Make sure you are appreciating it. There is nothing short of more and more appreciation than you can do for this. So, hey, first of all, a big congratulation on that, that being good senior, I think that's a big yes, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, in this whole fun, uh, we forgot to show even the product and page to the people. So uh, can we also do that, that people can go yeah. ahead and... Yeah. And I would really love that more people from India also uh, start to build all of these products and be on the channel again mm -hmm. that, hey, we built something awesome. We are on the product and... Oh, this is this is the big orangish button that everybody should be pressing by visiting the website. Yeah, we have yes. twenty-seven. Good going, good going. Yeah, I think is it true that the first one hides this number, no? For the first hour. Yeah, for the first hour, for the first four hours, I think, uh, in the broad hand page, uh, this the number of upvotes is hidden so that different products have the same opportunity. Yeah. 
So if we get uh, a bunch of upvotes for this four hours, and we'll be yeah the top on this. So these four hours are super crucial for us. <laughs> these are oh, the no. most important hours. So I think we yeah, can show some love. So go onto the website, show some love, show them that yes, we really appreciate when people are building for developers and are helping us and right from the college. So yes, a big, big shout out to you on that. And yeah, we should really, really work on that. All right, so uh, what are your future plans with this? Like what you are building, adding features, something which, and how did you came to that feature? Like you thought it, was it in the roadmap already or users gave you feedback, companies gave you feedback, like what's the next stage of it? Yeah. So the, the vision behind Pulpo is to help companies detect different bottlenecks in their organization. So with the metrics uh, that we showed you before, here we track like objective data from the, from the organization or from the squad. But with Pulpo, uh, what we do is combine this objective data with feedback from developers uh, so when objectives, the objectives that you set on your squad, for example, uh, fail or, or you don't success, we ask developers for feedback if they want to give it for the retro. And, and we combine this, this feedback with the objective metrics to give managers and CTOs like a really well structured uh, way to detect bottlenecks on their organization. Uh, and the vision behind Pulpo is help the organizations detect these bottlenecks uh, and also build uh, solutions for, for those common bottlenecks across different organizations. So for example, we now have this code review solution, but there may be other bottlenecks and there are other bottlenecks common on different organizations uh, that we want to solve. And uh, what I was imagining when I first time saw uh, the product when we uh, met, and we started, I was thinking the first thing in my mind, uh, at that time I was heavy in the corporate, I was working a lot there. I realized that, hey, this is going to be very useful for the appraisal cycle, how much you have worked, uh, how much the contribution you have made. So what do you think about that, that eventually a day will come uh, that, uh, hey, people will be using this product as for appraisal cycle. And just like there is appraisal, there will be a dashboard opening up. Hey, this is how much you have contributed in the comp. What, what are your thoughts on that? That yeah. your tool so, is going to be responsible for somebody's appraisal. Like, oh man, that's yeah, heavy I mean, on the shoulder. This is a dangerous part. Uh, it's super important to educate managers and CTOs to do not use this, uh, these metrics as individual metrics. And not because, you know, it's wrong or it's because it, it, it won't work. And measuring developer uh, performance individually is super hard because developers are involved in different tasks, like uh, code reviewing, designing a solution, uh, writing code, but also researching. And many things of, of that cannot be measured or not easy, easy to measure. Uh, but what we can do is to measure performance of developers as a team. And that's the objective of Pulpo. Uh, so we have here, you know, we measure the, the different squads and also the organization, but we never measure individual developers. And that's what's very important for companies. Oh like man, the, good save, good save there. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, the, the metrics we used are based on data metrics. Uh, these are some metrics based on research, but the same research says that these are only useful for teams. They're not really useful for, for just people. A quick question to say, some of the people want to follow you on Twitter to see what you're building, what's your thought on uh, maybe React on Angular or maybe on Flutter versus mm -hmm. React Native. So they want to get involved in some fight with you. So uh, can you share your Twitter or something if, if yeah. you're active there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll share in the chat. Let me just give a moment because I don't remember my handle. I think it's um, Marco. Uh, Marco. Okay, let me write in the chat. Sure. And maybe you can. 
just send me in the link and I'll post that on the chat itself. So people would be able to follow you. What's happening in the Barcelona, uh, maybe help you to build something awesome. Oh, yeah. One moment, because I think <laughs> I sent it wrong. Let's no worries. You, you can send me later on as well. I've yeah, uh, sure. tagged you on. Yeah. I've tagged you on LinkedIn as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I was able to easily find you there, uh, but I also couldn't find. Especially says I was not able to find you on Twitter. Are you not active there? No, I'm. I'm not really active on on Twitter. But yeah, they can send me messages on on LinkedIn. They want. Uh, LinkedIn. I've already tagged you on my uh, LinkedIn post. I, I also recently got active on Twitter, and I'm enjoying. Uh, a little heat like might sometimes come there, but hey, that that's fun. That's part of fun. It's uh, Marco Patino uh, Depp. I'll send the uh, here in the chat, uh, Hitesh. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. So I'll copy and paste it there. Here's the handle for Marco. So Hitesh, you recommend me opening an uh, X account? Uh, yeah, I would say that's a fun <laughs> place. Being on, uh, it has its own pros and cons, uh, but it, the tech Twitter space is pretty nice. You get all the updates and news, what's happening. Uh, you interact with a lot of cool people. I've made some good friends there. Uh, I didn't know uh, Francisco. There's a nice YouTube channel, Francisco, and he talks a lot about. I didn't know that he, he started by watching my channel. So uh, then we had a lot of conversation fun. We still have a lot of conversation. So a lot of fun stuff happens on the Twitter. And maybe, maybe uh, a lot of uh, traffic you might generate from there. A lot of feedback might come up that, hey, I like this. Mm -hmm. And one thing which I'm super happy that you accommodated, like a lot of people don't know this, but let me tell you this. Uh, when uh, me and uh, Marco got started, I'll remove the screen for a minute. So uh, when we started, the product was in the very early stage. I gave a couple of feedbacks on how things are going on there. And one of the things they did nicely, nicely was, first of all, adding the whole Pulpo on an individual account. That was way fast that you did what I expected. Uh, I gave that feedback on that. And also, having Pulpo open for all the open source project. I think that's a big, big contribution that you are giving to the community. So uh, they're very shy of talking about it. I'm not. So I'll talk about that. Uh, these guys, which you're seeing in front of your screen, they made that, uh, that, hey, we are very much in the line that we will help the open source communities and developers. So if any open source project want to use Pulpo as a product, they are very open for it and they don't charge for it. That's really nice of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for yeah, doing absolutely. this for the open source community. Yeah, I want to say something. Uh, so Pulpo comes out of the box configured like specifically for organizations. So if any open source like communities want to get in touch, because we can change that to, to make it more tailored to open source, uh, they can either email us or we also have like a Slack community. Yeah. So in our landing page, if you go like all the way down, there's a Slack button. And we are active there. So you can find us there really yeah. easily. Basically you can reach us out and we we help configure pull for for you for the for your project. Uh, that's so nice of you. I'm pretty sure a lot of open source projects and their founders will be watching this stream later on and will definitely reach out to you. This is really, I love when the product is being built by the developers, for the developers, they understand the pain and they always want to give a little more to the community than they can. So yeah, uh, uh, really, really nice. And thanks for that. Okay, apart from this, uh, a little talk about the Barcelona since you're here. I would love to revisit it again, uh, not in this season, uh it's little uh, on the heat side as of now so how is it going on in barcelona these days and how's the tech environment there like are people too much into the tech or the startup is it growing phase is it matured is it not yet started so what how do you yeah. call it actually uh you know when when i was deciding which university to go because i'm from other side of spain i was you know deciding between barcelona madrid valencia uh, and I, I have also a lot of interest on in startups and Barcelona is the biggest startup ecosystem in Spain. There, most of the unicorns of Spain are here in Barcelona. There are a lot of uh, talks, a lot of conferences and networking events. 
And it's like, you know, it's like the Silicon Valley of Spain. Um, and I think from Europe also, it's one of the biggest hubs of startups from, from Europe. And we are really grateful for that. We, we know a lot of people, uh, they, we help us out, uh, it's, it's great. Yep. Yeah. We're surrounded by, by people who have built stuff that has worked, no? And when we have to make a tough decision, we can go to some friends in the space that, that help us guide a little bit, give yeah. us their thoughts. Actually, in this co-working space in the university, we are surrounded for other startups. And actually, they were the first, the first users of, of Pulpo. Uh, and they gave us feedback. Um, we are really close with the coding uh, side by side. And it's super useful to gather feedback and to in the moment, right? Oh, that's awesome. Yes, feedback is the number one thing that you want as much as you can grab. And if it can come up directly face to face, oh man, nothing beats that. So really yeah. nice that you are. And, and the system ecosystem is growing up nicely in Barcelona. Good to know that. I've noticed that now Europe is picking up back and... Uh, uh, all this and uh, by the way sandeep is saying that i'm gonna pitch pulpo in our next sprint review in my organization hey awesome sandeep i reached them out they're pretty kind <laughs> and uh, they will definitely help you and the sure. virtue is uh so let me bring in some of the comments as well so uh, sandeep is saying that hey uh we're gonna pitch the pulpo in our next sprint review hey go ahead do that try this out there is nothing wrong in trying out maybe you'll uh vibe with it maybe not but i always recommend try out the stuff that's only when you know uh, that how. And uh, Devyanshu is saying, congratulations, Marco and Ses, for building amazing product, Pulpo. Hey, if you are here, thank you so much, Devyanshu. And uh, don't forget to upvote them on the uh, product <laughs> hunt as well. Let's show them some love there as well. And uh, really great. Okay, uh, anything else that you would like to uh, share, Marco, about uh, your personal journey or something? And one thing, which I always, always ask everyone, is what are your thoughts on AI? Uh, how do you think, like a lot of people are now accepting that, yes, it's kind of a bubble. A lot of videos are popping in now. Uh, what's your take and thought on this one? A lot of, I'm pretty sure a lot of beginners and uh, first year grad might be coming to you. Hey, I'm a little worried about my coding future in the AI. <laughs> are, you, are you getting that kind of a thing? So what's your take on that? How would you advise people on that? Yeah. I think AI is like a super big step on, it's like, I see it as, you know, when internet was created, I see it as big as that. Uh, and actually in Pulpo, we are uh, working really hard on AI. Uh, I don't know if we show it yet, but uh, every time you create the pull request, uh, Pulpo also analyzes the changes in the code uh, and creates a summary with AI on the pull request to get faster into the context of the pull request and also gives an initial review, an initial review. Oh, can I share the screen? Working. I think we can we can show some of the demos uh, because I saw some of the, on the web page as well, uh, where my admin dashboard was. There were some settings on the AI. I didn't... Uh, I had settings, yeah. Yeah, you can enable that or, or not. Uh, because, you know, some people don't want to share uh, the difference of the code. Yeah, so you it, this marks as experimental. So you are also <laughs> trying to utilize AI in summarizing and all of that. So what, what's yeah. your take going on with the AI? What, how do you see it? How do you pursue it? Yeah, I mean, my, my opinion of it is for the people that are worried that they lose their jobs uh, coming into the university. I think it's a it's a tool that would that will help um, help us. It's impressive what it can do. Like once you understand what's going on behind the scenes, like it's just uh, guessing words, you know. It, it's really impressive that it makes so much sense when uh, when it says what it says, no? and it is useful. When I have to do some like for instance, uh, some database migration that I have to move some tables around, and there's some obscure SQL that they don't show you in the university. I'm talking about uh, working with, with JSON type uh, columns and stuff like that. I would ask uh, like a copilot or, 
or ChatGPT or one of these tools to to give me like an entry point. No, they give you, and it's never perfect. It's never like just right, but it gives you an idea of where to start. Uh, and it's easier to tweak something that is that is not quite right than to build it from zero. No? Uh, really nice. And uh, uh, one more thing, you might find this question a little bit odd because this is more centric towards the Indian ecosystem, but I would love to know your thought. And I think Marco would be perfect to answer this. Uh, how much do you think uh, is the role of data structures and algorithm? Uh, and uh, how do you see it? Uh, what's the role of it? How much do you study it? And what's the role of it in building a product and all of that? So your thoughts on DSA, data structures and algorithm. So do you mean how how important is it uh, the, this theme of data structures and algorithms that you study on the university and to build yeah. a real product? Uh, real yeah, and startup? and do you think that it's the only way to go forward? And <laughs> like, there's a big hype. I know it's a little difficult to understand it here, but in India, people just only and only talk about data structures algorithm. It's yes, really, in the last couple of years only, they have moved away from the data structures and started to build more products. So how would you advise uh, this part of the world that, hey, uh, focus this much on data structures, how you should see it, and how do you see it? Okay, so it happens also in the university that you really they the teachers and the, the subjects re, really focus on data structures on uh, algorithm complexity on time complexity space complexity uh, different types of sorting arrays uh, but in the in the real world it's actually in my opinion uh, not so important because most of the themes are already built uh, um most of the frameworks already provide that that functions for you and the optimal data structure and the optimal algorithm to use. Um, so it's not so, so important. That, but I, I, I have to say that I think it's also interesting. It's also useful even to understand good, how good to have. it works. Yeah, you it's, can, it's useful to, to, to understand how it works behind the scenes because, you know, it's, you are like more uh, knowing what you are doing. I think it's a, it's a tool in the toolbox. No, uh, if you have, if you know that. Oh it man, exists, Cess, you have perfectly summarized it. It's it's a nice tool in the <laughs> yeah, toolbox. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you know that it exists, you have the opportunity to use it uh, when it comes up. No, but it's not something that you're really thinking about all the time, especially when you're building a small startup. This type of complexity issues really kick in when you have like a big product with millions of users and then you start worrying about op optimizing every little bit of it because then it becomes important. But when you have a few users, it's not that you don't have to do everything uh, perfectly, but you have other uh, issues in mind. Yeah. Okay, uh, one last question uh, before we sum it up. Uh, I have noticed when people move into programming, they are worried about the syntax and uh, all these basics, how I'll rotate the arrays and whatnot. But once you build the product, you are a completely different beast of a programmer. Once you hit that product and even 10 people are using it, you are way out of the league of programmers compared to somebody who is learning a lot uh, but haven't built a full end-to-end -end project. So what's your take on this? How does it shape the developer's journey uh, before building a product and after building a product? That's a good question, actually. Uh, and, you know, at the at the beginning, at the really beginning, uh, we only code, uh, we only program and, and nothing else. Now, uh, especially me myself, uh, I'm really very much into you know fundraising, marketing, uh, finance, uh, sales, uh, and there's like programming is now like a small part of my time, and the other consumes much, much, and yeah. But I also like to program. Uh, time to time and, and not forget about things. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think that changed me quite a lot. 
I'm really much um, oriented in, in other things in programming. What about you, Cess? How building a product has changed you as a programmer? Well, as, as for me, I do spend most of my time programming and I'm taking the role of, of building the product now. Uh, I think the, mo the most noticeable difference is that when you're programming for fun or for, or for projects, you try to do everything as perfectly as you can, uh, no matter the time that it, it takes. No? But when you're building a product, especially if you're like the whole development team and you have to ship stuff, yeah, customers are waiting on new features, on bug fixes, features that, that they've requested. Uh, you have to kind of balance out, do I do this fast or do I do this uh, perfectly? You have to find the point where it's going to work well, but it's not going to take all your time so you can build stuff uh, continuously, no faster. Oh man, awesome. Uh, and uh, how much do you use that whiteboard behind you? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> <I'm asking. laughs> Like Actually, all the... we have another whiteboard over there, uh, and we just match the other one to set the different tasks and the progress of the tasks. Uh, what's wow. the metrics? Oh, man, it feels so good to uh, have people, freshers, uh, who have built something on their own and now are pro in building and shipping the product. So, yeah. Uh, anything else that you would like to share? Because that's all the questions I wanted to ask. Anything else that you would like to share, mention, or something? Uh, uh, maybe just point out again these four hours, guys, that should be important. Uh, so you, it will help a lot if you show us support in the product hunt. Because once these four hours sent, uh, the products are ranked uh, on number of upvotes. And if we can reach the top, that would be. Incredible. Sure, yeah, sure. I'm pretty I, sure. The link I'm is there in the pinned comments. Go ahead, show them some love. I'll also do the voting just after this live stream. Of course, I will do it, obviously. <laughs> Thanks, Hidesh. I want to I wanna shout out some people joining on, on our Slack community. Uh, thank you for joining. If you have any feedback or anything, if you've tried the product, we will be there to, to receive feedback or any comments you have. Yeah, all of you can go on the Pulpo website at the very bottom of it. Uh, there's a Slack channel. You can ask them questions, feedback about the product. Uh, maybe if you want anything else, uh, just don't ask how's the weather in Barcelona. <laughs> Apart from that, <laughs> often people ask that even. Uh, so uh, go ahead and join them up. I guess uh, that's all for this live. I'll definitely uh, post it on my tweet and all of that, the link for the product and as well. And best of luck to both of you. You have done a fantastic job. Uh, great hard work is being put in the product. And it makes sense as a developer first product. That's why I love it the most. So congratulations on the launch. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Hitesh. Thanks. All right. So let me just uh, end up the stream. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining in this. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be watching it later on as well. Uh, good to see all of you up here. I hope this session has given you some of the insight of what it takes to build a product, what mindset it is, and what it takes to build it, and how to launch it on the product and some insights of it. And definitely, if you need more help or something, I'm always here. Uh, Marco and uh, Marco and Cess is also here. So ask them, ask us. And again, uh, one more time, a big shout out to them for launching on the product hunt. Congratulations, guys. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I know this is a bit odd time, but hey, uh, definitely we'll be watching it late in the night as well. Thank you so much and bye-bye everyone.